This is a sell high video. This is not a sell low video. I'm not going to come out here and say, hey guys, Patrick Mahomes just lost Rasheed Rice. Everybody's panicking. Sell Mahomes. Hey guys, Garrett Wilson's been a bum through the first four weeks. Sell Wilson. Hey guys, Brandon Ike's been a horrible. He hasn't scored a single game with more than 10 fantasy points. Cut him, sell him, get him off your... No. I'm going to be giving you names of very talented players, very exciting players that people actually want to trade for and I'm going to be giving you what I would be willing to sell them for if they were on my roster. Before we get into the names this week, let's recap what we had last week because I just want to put a little asterisk on some of these names where their situations have changed. Last week, Dak Prescott was a sell-high QB for us coming off a monstrous game where the man was the QB1, I believe, against the Baltimore Ravens. But the thing is now with Dak, when you lose two of your top defensive players, and you look at how this Dallas Cowboys offense projects going into the future, this situation has fundamentally changed where I do think that Dak's going to be in a lot of these games where he's actually forced to drop back and throw the ball a ton in the second half, very similar to what we saw with Geno Smith this past week, falling behind to the Lions and having to be, I mean, throwing the ball 60 plus times. That may be the case with Dak Prescott. So I actually think if you didn't sell him last week, he's a more appealing hold than he was previously. We had Jonathan Taylor as a sell high candidate last week. And be completely honest with you, um, we maybe get lucky with the injury because my advice here was absolutely garbage. I told you to go through and look to pivot off of Jonathan Taylor to one of those other premium elite running backs in a full PPR format that will catch the ball knowing that Anthony Richardson won't have a super high check down rate. We said to go get Bijan Robinson. We said to go get Brees Hall. And if Taylor was fully healthy, probably at this point, you would prefer Jonathan Taylor as opposed to those two other running backs. Now, obviously, Taylor dealing with his injury, very different situation than it was a week ago. Um, we set a sell eye on Zach Charbonnet with Walker coming back in. Charbonnet was going to be relegated to backup duties with the small receiving role and going back to just pre being a premium handcuff back. We probably saw that this past week. I don't think you can sell Charbonnet anymore. Um, we looked at the Rashad White usage and the efficiency with what this coaching staff was saying, saying, okay, you know what? If you can sell and get out on a running back to price tag for Rashad White, we would even in a full PPR league. We said, okay, with Malik Neighbors, he is at the top of the NFL with total targets. He's absolutely crushing. Looks like it's going to be one of the most exciting wide receivers in the NFL four years to come. But if we can pivot over to maybe one of those veterans with a larger sample that has better quarterback play, such as CeeDee Lamb, such as Jamar Chase, such as Justin Jefferson, such as Amon Ross St. Brown, I probably would. Now, where we draw the line, and honestly, where I think you have a very interesting conversation about Malik Neighbors, is would you sell him for... AJ Brown. And I, I don't know the answer to that question. If you look at our rankings, that's pretty much exactly where we have them ranked. We had Chris Godwin as that sell high candidate, just underlying the usage that we've had with Godwin out of the slot has been phenomenal. And obviously he had been a top five wide receiver up until that point in fantasy. But the thing was, if you looked at the target volume that you had from Godwin versus the target volume that you had from Evans, plus the matchup that Evans was coming off of, it was a really good blow up spot for Mike Evans. And you should expect that if we're looking at touchdowns going into the future, you're going to be seeing more touchdowns for Evans, less touchdowns from Godwin. If you looked at their historical touchdown rate, kind of saw that play out this past week. I think Godwin is still a high end wide receiver too for me. Um, I think honestly, what I've seen in the live streams that we are doing every single night is people are a little more realistic where they are now ranking him as that low and wide receiver one high and wide receiver two, which I'm completely fine holding him there, of course. And then looking at Dallas Goddard, having him as that sell high candidate, pivoting off of him. Once you have the AJ Brown, Devonta Smith injuries, and he's an absolute blow up must start top three tight ends. I think if you could still move off Dallas Goddard and go get a tight end like Kelsey, go get a tight end like Bowers that has been disappointing over the past few weeks, I definitely would, but a much easier said than done. Now let's go over to the sell high candidates that we have now this week. And let's look at a wide receiver that I did not draft in the flock league, but I do have and a ridiculous amount of underdog drafts, and I really hope I am wrong. Stefan Diggs has been crushing it for us this season. Diggs has looked phenomenal. I mean, this is a player that's come out, and he scored three touchdowns so far this season, and he scored these three touchdowns with a considerable amount of target volume as well. I mean, you've had 33 targets so far this season for Stefan Diggs in this Houston Texans offense. So if you're just looking at the raw fantasy points, where week one, 22 points, week two, seven and a half, then 19, almost pretty much 20 points, and then 18 and a half this past week, um, Stefan Diggs has been crushing regardless of if it's a full PPR, non-PPR, or half PPR league. 
And with Diggs, the reason we like drafting him this year is based off the size concerns that you had with Tank Dell historically and the fact that we knew the quarterback play was going to be extremely efficient here in Houston. Now, of course, we had Stephon Diggs penciled in to be the wide receiver two in this Houston Texans offense this season. And Nico Collins was projecting out to be the wide receiver one for me. But to be completely honest with you, while we did assume that Nico Collins would be the wide receiver one this season, I did not expect Nico Collins to be a top three wide receiver in fantasy. I did not expect Nico Collins to be an alpha to the point where you can project him for possibly a 30% team target share rest of season. And at the same time, if you go through and look at the target volume for Tank Dell and the games that he did play, even if I wasn't a Tank Dell fan this offseason, I have no Tank Dell exposure. I really hope Tank Dell does not come back and does not crush. Um, Dell is kind of close to Diggs if you're looking at the overall usage. Like, Dell's a lot closer to Diggs than Diggs is to Nico Collins. And if we're looking at three wide receivers, seeing volume in this offense going into the future, and Nico Collins absolutely dominating said volume, I do think that possibly is a little bit of a concern. Especially if you're going to look at the intended air yards that you've had for Stefan Diggs this season and how he's been operating in this Houston Texans offense. Diggs has actually not really seen a ton of downfield involvement. Stephon Diggs is being used a ton across the line of scrimmage. You're seeing this with his yards per target being one of the lowest marks that we have had in a very, very, very long time. We had 5.5 yards per target week one, 6.1 yards per target week two. He has yet to crack eight yards per target in any game so far this season. So he's primarily been fueled off of the touchdown upside. Obviously, this past week with no tank tell, you get that extra touchdown. You have the nine targets as well. But we've now been able to see that Nico Collins has cemented himself as the elite wide receiver one in this offense. While at the same time, Stefan Diggs will be dealing with competition from tank Dell. I think Diggs is a locked and loaded uh, mid wide receiver two for me. I have him around wide receiver 20 in my rest of season rankings, which obviously you can check out the updated rest of season ranks over on flogfantasy.com. But if I could pivot off of Stefan Diggs to somebody like Mike Evans, where I don't think that there's a third option of significance in Tampa. And at the same time, I think Evans potentially has the wide receiver one upside in this offense um, where we can go over to DK Metcalf. Where if we're looking at Metcalf, while yes, you have a little bit of a wide receiver trio going on in Seattle, DK Metcalf is the head of said trio where Diggs isn't getting alphaed by Nico. Or maybe if you needed an elite level quarterback and you could somehow pivot over to Lamar or Jalen Hurts, dependent on your league settings and what those teams with elite quarterback need at wide receiver, those would be very interesting trades for me. Now, if you were ever wanting to buy or if you're ever wanting to trade for a player in fantasy football, one, I would definitely recommend going over and using the trade calculator over on flockfantasy.com. We built it out to be completely free for y'all where y'all can go through and you can put in your exact league settings and it tinkers a bunch of stuff there on the back end to try to give you the most accurate advice possible. And at the same time, you can use the trade finder where you're able to go ahead. You're able to put in the exact league settings you're looking for. And you can throw Stefan Diggs into the trade finder and you can see every trade that was made yesterday, the day before, the day before that, the day before that with Stefan Diggs in real fantasy football leagues, completely free for you over on flockfantasy.com. Um, going over and looking at some of the trade finder results that we've had for Diggs today. Um, somebody traded Stefan Diggs, Rico Dattle for Jacoby Myers, Garrett Wilson. Y'all are going to hate, hate, hate me for saying this, but assuming Devontae Adams is not a jet, I do prefer Garrett Wilson over Stefan Diggs at this point. Somebody traded Xavier Worthy and Stefan Diggs for Cooper Cup, Jalen Hurts. I would rather have Cup over Xavier Worthy rest of season. I would rather have Jalen Hurts over Stefan Diggs. Somebody traded Stefan Diggs and Zay Flowers for Marvin Harrison Jr. and Patrick Mahomes. I think going from Diggs to Harrison, and I know it maybe it hasn't been the case so far this year in their points per game, but I still think Harrison has a significant edge up over Diggs rest of season. And also pivoting from Flowers to Mahomes, not going to fault you with. And then going from Diggs, Singletary, Ferguson to get to Pittman, Jameer Gibbs. This is one of those you send out and hope that your league mate either has no idea what the hell they're doing or you're ending up with just a counter that is a little closer. But if you ever got a deal like this accepted for Stefan Diggs, were you able to go through and just effectively throw in a couple extra assets and pivot over to a true elite RB1, such as Jameer Gibbs, it would be an absolute no-brainer. Now, looking at the Diggs pick him over on Underdog Fantasy against Buffalo, they currently have him at higher, lower 56.5 receiving yards. 
I actually am probably going to stay away from this. I think if Dell were to be ruled out, I would like the higher. But if Dell does play, I think it'd be very tough to take the higher there, just given the volume that Dell is going to have in this offense. But I mean, of course, if you thought that Diggs would easily have 56 and a half receiving yards, you can find that link to Underdog Fantasy in the description or the comment section. If you use promo code FLOCK over there on Underdog, you'll actually get a 50% deposit bonus up to $1,000. Plus, you're going to be getting a free Underdog pick. If you sign up before the Thursday night game, that'll be a free Kirk Cousins pick. More than less than half a total yard. After the Thursday night game, it would be a different player for Sunday's slate. But also, with code FLOCK, you're going to be getting a free team review over there on FLOCKFANTASY.COM. And yeah, just make sure you go through the link in the description or comment section. But moving over to what we have with our next receiver, DJ Moore. Now, DJ Moore, every single week so far this season, has had double-digit fantasy points. He has been a consistent floor option for you and an offense where the passing volume has been extremely disappointing. And while, yes, Keenan Allen does absolutely nothing this past week in the box score and Keenan Allen does not look exciting and DJ Moore is still able to get there, what this does is it doesn't inherently make uh, Caleb Williams way better or Keenan Allen way better, Keenan Allen's emergence in. It just takes what already was a very small offensive pie and it adds one extra little sliver that's going to be going outside of DJ Moore's portion. Where DJ Moore, the target share had been there through the first three weeks where you were looking at eight targets, 10 targets, 10 targets. This past week, you only see six targets in Chicago. You do save your game with the receiving touchdown. But one of the main issues that you're going to have is if we are looking at the efficiency that we have had from Caleb Williams so far this season, if we're going through and looking at the current leaders in adjusted yards per pass attempt, and this is a very sticky metric, and this is something that directly leads to wide receiver production. Right now, the quarterbacks at the very bottom of the NFL were Bryce Young. Bryce Young, I mean, by far and away the worst. I've never seen somebody this bad. 1.96 adjusted yards per pass attempt. I, I, I've never seen anything like that. Bo Nix, 3.62 adjusted yards per pass attempt. Never really seen anything this bad last throughout an entire season. Will Levis, 4.22. Deshaun Watson, 4.54. This is why I sold Amari Cooper in the Flock League. And Caleb Williams, 4.73. You need to ask yourself, are you excited about any wide receivers attached to Bryce Young, Bo Nix, Will Levis, Deshaun Watson? I personally am not. You can maybe make an argument for Amari Cooper just because Amari is going to be consistently seeing 9, 10 targets a game. But the issue now with DJ Moore is with the addition of Keenan Allen, it is very difficult to project out DJ Moore to see those 9 to 10 targets a game. Plus, if we're going to assume if somebody gets better in this offense as the year progresses, it's probably going to be the rookie wide receiver that we've already seen a better game from Roma Dunze than DJ Moore's had all season now. So if you look at DJ Moore in my rest of season rankings over there on the site, I do have him as the wide receiver 24. So definitely still somebody you're probably starting at wide receiver two or the flex, but I just don't see the path to the elite level ceiling. So what I would rather do is I would honestly rather pivot off of DJ Moore and go get a running back with kind of safe volume. I'd rather have a running back like James Conner, Jordan Mason, or Travis Etienne. If you're playing in a league where you only start two wide receivers, one flex. And honestly, if you wanted to shoot for the upside here, obviously I don't have any news regarding Devontae Adams at the time of this recording. But I mean, if Adams finds himself a different landing spot, I'd probably rather have Devontae Adams over DJ Moore. Going through and using the trade finder, we actually see that somebody traded Roshan Johnson and DJ Moore for Bucky Irving and Garrett Wilson. Looking at this, I think pretty much everybody would agree that Bucky Irving is an upgrade over Roshan Johnson. So here, you're really seeing that maybe people are valuing DJ Moore higher than Garrett Wilson at this point. And personally, I think that's a mistake, assuming that Devontae Adams is not a New York Jet. I'm going over to our next trade. Somebody traded DJ Moore for Cooper Cup. Personally, I think that Cooper Cup has the ceiling to come in maybe next week and immediately be a wide receiver one in fantasy yet again. I don't see that upside for DJ Moore. Somebody tra today traded away DJ Moore for Travis Etienne. Like I said, I'd probably rather have the running back too that just projects with safe volume. And then somebody also traded DJ Moore, Brian Robinson for Etienne and Garrett Wilson. Really the main reason in showing this, I'd probably rather have Garrett Wilson over DJ Moore, but I know y'all hate that. Now, moving over to another receiver, you're going to get mad at me for saying to sell, Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams 
has looked like a phenomenal real-life wide receiver. Exactly like you would expect with Jamison. He has been a deep threat option that's been forcing defenses to give respect to Jared Goff's deep ball and has been allowing a ton of space underneath for this team to go out there and run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. I mean, if we're going through and we are looking at stats that you currently have, the leaders in rushing attempts per game this season have been the Ravens, the Steelers, the Saints. I'm going to throw out the Ravens and the Saints because if you remove the quarterback rushing attempts, then clearly the Lions leapfrog them. I'm going to throw out the Washington Commanders with the Jaden Daniels rushing attempts. I'm going to throw out the Green Bay Packers with the rushing attempts you had from Malik Willis. So for ignoring quarterback rushing attempts, the only team that's been more rush heavy than the Detroit Lions so far this year is the New Orleans Saints. And this is dramatically skewed with the New Orleans Saints boat racing a few teams at the very beginning of the season. With Wilson, he's been great for the Lions opening up that rushing attack. However, specifically for fantasy football, can we be looking at him as a must-start player going into the future? I do not believe so. Because our priors on Jamison Williams is that he was that field-stretching wide receiver that is going to give you boom weeks, that is going to give you bust weeks. And if you're looking at what we've had over the past two weeks, this is the perfect example of it. We have the bust against the Arizona Cardinals, the boom against the Seattle Seahawks, but with Seattle when he scores 16 fantasy points, what was the underlying volume here? Two targets. Two targets for Jamison Williams. So over the past two weeks now, Jamison Williams has had a total of five targets, three receptions. Obviously, the long receiving touchdown is so damn exciting, and I'm not saying that Jamison Williams is a bad real-life player. I think he's a phenomenal player. I think he's the perfect fit for this Detroit Lions offense, but I just don't see him as a full PPR consistent option in fantasy. Non-PPR, you like him. Honestly, non-PPR, the volume doesn't matter as much as his big play potential and his touchdown upside. But in a full PPR format, I currently have him ranked around wide receiver 36. I would rather pivot over to the running backs coming off of injuries. I would rather have Jonathan Brooks. I'd rather have Nick Chubb. I would rather have another wide receiver that's in a rush first offense in Zay Flowers. Because here, you don't have to deal with the Monroe St. Brown. I would rather have George Pickens in another rush first offense, but there you don't have to deal with the Monroe St. Brown. I'd rather have Jake Ferguson, who honestly thinks one of the very few tight ends that we can consistently rely upon. But I mean, even looking at the freaking trade finder right now, I was surprised to see these trades with Jamison Williams and literally go use the trade finder for free. You'll see some of the craziest deals out there. Somebody traded Jamison Williams for Chris Olave. Somebody traded Alave and Jamison Williams for CD Lamb. Somebody traded Jamison Williams and Devontae, for Devontae Adams. Somebody traded Jamison Williams and J.K. Dobbins for Brees Hall. I mean, going through and looking at the trade finder, obviously I can find trades where I'd rather have the Jamison Williams side, but over 75% of the trades that were made that I saw today, and I only made it through the first 20 of them when we were looking, but the over 75%, I prefer the side that was trading away Jamison Williams. Going over to Rashid Shahid. Shahid also looks like a phenomenal real life player. Shahid also is going to be opening up this rushing attack for the New Orleans Saints. Is that deep ball specialist, super efficient option in New Orleans. And he is going to be a very valuable asset for this team going into the future as he's been through the first four weeks. You see the big play upside with Shahid. If you are looking at his Yards per catch so far this season. Yards per catch week one, 24 yards. Week two, 24 yards. Week four, 10 yards. You are going to get the massive booms based off the deep ball with Shahid. And honestly, this past week with Shahid, he gives you the best week of his entire NFL career when it comes to the target volume. He had 11 targets in this New Orleans Saints offense which is a massive jump compared to what we had seen through the first three weeks, where at the first three weeks, he had five targets, he had four targets, he had five targets. And honestly, I want to be very happy for the guy. I want to root for him. This is one of those really exciting real life players that just in a full PBR format where you don't have the reception volume consistency, it's just difficult to start. And I want to assume, oh, he had 11 targets. He had eight receptions this week. Almost an identical stat line to Chris Olave. That's going to happen every week going into the future. But then you go ahead and you look at Shahid's career. 
And let's just go through. I mean, I'm going to breeze by this rapid fire. 2022 um, targets by week. One, one, three, zero. One, two, three, four, four, five, six, four. Let's go over to 2023. We have six, four, two, seven, two, six, eight, three, three, nine, five, four, nine, three, four. Going over to 2024. We have five, four, five, eleven. If we look at his entire career, the Atlanta game usage was phenomenal, but it is an outlier historically. Now, of course, this is a different offensive coordinator. This is a very exciting offense. If you look at sports books, they are projecting out the Saints have an implied team total of 18 and a half points this week. So they are saying that this Saints offense is going to come down just a bit. Looking at where I have Shahid ranked, I have Shahid ranked as a wide receiver four. For me, he's always going to be that option that I'm considering like, oh, do I put him in the flex? Do I not put him in the flex? Is it a good matchup? Could we see that spike? I would rather pivot over to a running back that has the elite ceiling if the starter were good down in front of him. I'd rather have Zach Charbonnet. I'd rather have Braylon Allen over Shahid, to be honest with you. I'd rather have Chase Brown over Shahid. I would rather have Shahid in my starting lineup this week. But these options that are at the very top of our bench slash the very bottom end of our starting lineup, I want the players that I think could potentially win a league for you. And of course, of course, I take on a lot of risk when I say this because you can clip it and laugh at me if Shahid turns out to be a top 10 receiver this season. But I don't see Shahid being a true league winning option. Even if Olave were to go down, I think Shahid's a top 24 wide receiver, but I don't view him as a top 12 name. Whereas like with Charbonnet, if Walker goes down, he's immediately a top 10 back. I think you can start him if you get desperate for the flex as well. Um, going down to some trades that we've seen in the trade finder. Some of these are just freaking nuts. Very similar to what we had say with the, um, Jamison Williams trades, almost every single instance here that I saw the trade finder, I preferred the other side than Shahid. Somebody traded Shahid for Puka Nakua. Give me Puka. Somebody traded Shahid Baker Mayfield for Cooper cup. Give me Cooper cup. Somebody traded Shahid and Sam Darnold for Brandon Ayuk. Obviously Shahid's been significantly better through four weeks than Ayuk this season. But looking at their respective careers, the larger sample tells us to go with Ayuk. Ayuk's in the better offense. Somebody went Shahid and Evans for Tyree Kill. I like that, to be honest with you, long term. Somebody traded Shahid and P. Ryan. P. Ryan barely worth the raw spot. I mean, I don't even know if he is. So effectively traded Shahid straight up for Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper's at least going to have consistent target volume. Somebody traded Shahid and Alexander Madison for ETN. Give me ETN. And somebody traded Shahid for Brian Thomas. Like I said, non PBR format. You're a little more excited about what you have with these options like Shaquid as well as Jamison Williams. But in a full PPR league where the consistent target volume is not there, they're a little less excited for it. But I really do appreciate you and really hope I was able to help you out in some way with this. And of course, if I was, hit the like, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football. And if you wanted to say, Mason, you're an idiot. Stefan Diggs is going to crush I'm going to go take the higher than 56 and a half receiving yards. You can do so on Underdog Fantasy. You can find that link in the description as well as the comment section. If you use promo code FLOCK on Underdog, you can get a 50% deposit bonus up to $1,000. Plus, you will also be getting set up with a free pick, more than less than half a total yard for Kirk Cousins on Thursday night. Sign up after the Thursday night game will be a different player for Sunday. And you'll get a free team review in the live streams that we are hosting every single night over there on flockfantasy.com. Just make sure you set up an account on flockfantasy.com with the same email address as your account on Underdog Fantasy. That way I know who to hook up with that free team review voucher. But thank you again. I really do appreciate you and really hope I do get to see you out in the live stream after the game tonight.